Springfield's Pure Classic Rock. 104.7 The Cave. 104.7 The Cave, Springfield's Pure Classic Rock. Okay. Mike, the intern in the studio once again with my brother from another mother, Jay Stevens, Where's aka the echo? talent. Where's this echo coming? It's from? dark side and of the stream on 104.7 The Cave. And as we do still. every week, we pick a documentary, we just watch it most of the time, and then we discuss it. And this week was my turn. I picked the new documentary, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised. Oh, it was so good, man. It was a really good documentary. Something you might not know about Mike the intern is the fact that I am a massive massive soul, soul music brother fan. max a soul brother i i can't I, I've, I've been asked this question a thousand times what's your favorite music what's your favorite band and my desert island music is soul music it is the one genre that i could literally, literally listen to every single See, day guys, never get burned out i would have thought he's mike is soul like music. shrek he has soul layers music. he has soul layers music. like an onion like shrek and the Summer of Soul documentary tells the story of what they called the Harlem Cultural Festival. It was the same summer of Woodstock. So, of course, 69. no one has ever heard of it. No one. Yeah. Up until this point, I didn't even know it existed. I no, never it sounds like nobody did. I, every one of these musicians that played at this thing, I'm a huge fan of. Stevie Wonder, probably one of my favorite artists of all time. Nina Simone. I, I can Sly I'm, the family Sly stone, the dude. I mean, that dude, guy got down, dude. bro. We'll get into Sly these performances. I was like, oh, okay, we'll, this dude's yeah, like a, a prince we'll, before we'll, prince. Oh, he was a proto prince for uh. sure. Um, and we'll get into these performances in just a minute, but yeah, it was completely overshadowed by Woodstock, and uh, basically it was shot by a guy they hired to shoot the entire thing. They didn't have any lights. They had to had the the stage face the sun. Yeah, natural yeah, light. yeah. Really smart stuff. What they did. And then the all the filming of this thing literally sat in a basement for 50 years until Quest Love, the drummer How for the How did Roots, Quest Love come up on this? He must have heard something about it. I mean, I'm sure that somebody had told him and about what the, it. And he's the perfect dude to be the oh, catalyst absolutely. to bring it out. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because he's got the clout. He's in the mainstream. He knows all these record labels. And that in itself is probably a huge hurdle to jump because it's not just Motown here. You're talking about multiple different record labels that have got property interest in these artists and have to go talk to them and say, hey, we got this footage. We need to use it. It's historical. And I'm sure that in itself uh, that was crazy, was a man. Crazy. The other thing that I was thinking of when I was watching this, and I know you're going to laugh, is when are they going to press this on vinyl? Because <laughs> I'm thinking all these all these performances yes. definitely have to be these a, need to be released. Double again, album or something, man. Double. It'll probably be a 7 to a 10 LP box set, or they'll release them individually over time. I hope to God that's what he's going to do. I scoured the internet, hopefully to find I could find something. It's not there, but uh, hopefully some of these performances because what they said the way they sounded they sounded great um so hopefully he's got them and uh these will finally see the light of day as they should uh we'll get to uh some of the performances in our discussion of the summer of soul next dark side of the stream on 104.7 the K. One hundred four point seven, the K. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio discussing the documentary "Summer of Soul," and it tells the story of the Harlem Cultural Festival that was held over several weekends in the summer of nineteen sixty nine. Free, free to free go show, free Anywhere show, and had every star you could think of. Everyone, every thirty to fifty thousand people showed up for this thing every week. Um, yeah, it was like it was every weekend, right, for like two months or something. Yeah. It, it, it was amazing. It, it was in every weekend was a different genre. You had gospel one weekend, you had soul, you had jazz, you had like pop. Um, and we'll get into these performances in a little bit. But what I wanted to bring up first was this documentary for me personally, uh, helped me remember all of these things that I was a part of when I was a kid, whether it was, you know, like growing up in Cape, they used to do the uh, city of roses festival. Um, you know, around here, you could, uh, look at maybe possibly route 66 or the Ozark empire fair stuff that happened during the summer that when you're a kid just feels like magic. Nick's the sucker days. Duck race. <laughs> Ozark duck race. Uh, I mean, I, honestly, like that stuff for people around here, it, for a kid, when you go to things like this and people are around, like for an adult, you know, we, we, we kind of lose that magic, but for a kid. It's magical. Did you have anything like that when you were growing up? I don't think so. You didn't have anything like that no, in Hawaii I I or California? So. Uh, mm, I am. No. Nothing you just like everyone, you know, the, the parents were kind of hanging out. And the kids were just running around like crazy, just 
you know, getting into fights. You find your first girlfriend. I think I've tuned out like- a lot of my childhood. I lived. I grew up in LA, man. It's a different scene, man. And they didn't do that stuff. No, oh, maybe, God, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe Hawaii May Day festivals, perhaps, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't like that, though. It wasn't like you. that. God, no, that breaks but, my heart. You didn't get that. But there was up. a couple things from this one that I took away. One was the mayor of New York. You know, blue-eyed white guy, and he was so down with these guys and like embraced them. And this was in troubling times. Oh for, yeah, for, look at '68, the year before. Stuff. I mean, it was not a good good time um, socially in the United States, and uh, for just a really quick period of time, everything was cool. Everything was cool. And then the other was, I thought uh, it was good because these people said, you know, they'd sneak out of the house to go to this festival, didn't tell their moms where they're going, and these young kids were like. It was just I saw so many people that were like me, and they had never seen that many people like them together, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then another thing I thought was when they said Sly and the Family Stone came out, and they said he had a white guy on drums. Yeah. They go, what the, the white guy can't play this and kind a, of music. And a black girl playing trumpet, dude. And they and, got and down, yeah, man. Dude, oh, Sly, it's so good. Sly's like, performance woo. was unreal, and he had the, that crowd in the palm of his hand. That's why I hope to God these performances will come out someday as their own like the, sly's set stevie wonder set fit the mission set um, and one other highlight was the story of the aquarius the the the, the play hair oh how the they dude got lo- into leaving it. his wallet yeah. in the cab and really it just cool happened story. to be that guy oh yeah. man yeah yeah it was a really it's a good it's a good show it's an easy watch you know it, and, and you know me i'm not really it, into soul music like how mike is it's not my thing but i was i was enthralled i watched the whole thing it was really, awesome. really good man. if it caught jay stevens attention yeah. you know yeah, it's it getting it at was, least it was it was at least it, it was interesting it was cool to watch soul too. records is which, which, which cool is, to I think watch man that's how we're it gonna made me want to learn it. synchronized dancing with you while i sang dude, that was dude, yeah, that's yeah, so badass dude yeah yeah the stories Bro! about we'll get yeah! into, we don't want to ruin this and we'll get into my favorite performance I'm, not next. I'm enhancing it yeah well i don't want to give it away too much we're going to tease what my favorite performance from this was next dark side of the stream on 104.7 the King. one hundred four point seven. The K, Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, and we are discussing the uh, Summer of Soul, which tells the story of the Harlem Cultural Festival held in the summer of nineteen sixty nine. Over the course, I believe it was like six weekends. Yeah. Um, every weekend was a different genre. Jay's performance, his favorite performance, Sly and the Family Stone, Proto yeah, Prince. Uh, sweet, and bro. and you're right. Uh, if uh, as as a as a white person, if you were in this place, uh, and as as a, as drummer, a member, man, he had the wasn't a lot of white outfit. people there. But then you look on the stage, Sly gets up there, and he's it's a mixed race band, and yep. at the time that wasn't very common. And I uh, props to Sly for doing it. And uh, they, I mean, it was a great performance. There were unbelievable performances. Uh, Staple Sisters were there, which was unbelievable. Um, you had some incredible jazz performances. Max Roach and his wife were there. But Even my the Puerto Ricans. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The conga stuff, the Afrobeat stuff. I, it was so badass. Um, but my favorite all time performance, at least that I witnessed, was Stevie Wonder's because Stevie Wonder is my favorite. Um, this was a really interesting period for him and being in 69 because he had been, you know, this, this wonderkin as far as this kid who could literally do anything. Um, incredible voice. The fact that he was blind, didn't hold him back. He yeah. play any instrument. He stuck on the drums even for a little bit. Dude. Well, that's the thing. Dude. At, at this point, he was at this pinnacle in his career where it was like, do you just keep singing, you know, sign seal delivered all these Motown hits that you did? Or do you actually be try to become this this artist that can create and do all these things well he chose the latter thank god because then he would go on to you know record albums like uh talking book and songs in the cave life and music of my mind just among a few were in most of those records he was the musician for the entire thing with exception of some instruments jeff beck would play guitar sometimes like prince again every i mean and you're talking not just like prince stevie wonder is blind so i mean right. someone would walk him to the drums he cut the drums someone would walk him to the keyboards he cut the keyboards so, so on and so on and that Talent, my man. friend is Talent. unbelievable so hopefully that that performance will see the light of day 
Um, and again, this documentary really does a good job of not only telling this perspective of the cultural festival and how it went down, but they're picking out people in the crowd that were there as children, you know, oh, that, yeah, like you yeah, said, that snuck out them, yeah. that one guy that when they're watching the fifth dimension performance and the girl, Ooh. Michelle or whatever gets on and she was g- gorgeous then and yeah, still, still now still, yeah. as a woman in her seventies, still. still unbelievably gorgeous. They show him. They show him, and he just kind of gets this yes. like glossy-eyed look on his face. Yes. And you can tell he's still in love. And as a man, his first crush that had you know first crushes with uh, women like that um, growing up. Per, per, personally, like I mentioned a couple weeks back, Tina Turner, which was one of my very first crushes. I still get glossy-eyed when I see her. Aww. So, um, yeah, Summer Soul, incredible documentary. Uh, up next, we will give it our rating and uh, i believe it's jay's turn for the next documentary in dark side oh, of the stream no. so you only got a few minutes to think about I'm what we're watching spot. next we'll do that next on 104.7 the cave One hundred four point seven, the cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens. We're back in the studio. It is dark side of the stream, and summer this week soul. we discuss the yeah, summer of soul, great. which you've probably seen in an advertising if you stream anything online. Yeah, Hulu yeah, they were pushing it. And Quest Love, man, um, it, yeah, props, props, props perfect to Quest guy, Love. perfect guy to stumble across this footage. However, he did that. I mean, I don't. The whole fact that this footage is nobody knew it existed for 50 years. That's and the quality crazy. of the footage. It's good. If it's sat in a basement, and it's so long, colorful. It, it all kind of looks so good. So props to the mayor of New York at the time for letting him do this. Yeah. Props to the bands that showed up because just like in Woodstock, it was the same deal. It was like, oh, we've got, we yeah. got Stevie's going to be here. Oh, yeah. well, hell, like Stevie's going to be here. Right. There was we've got probably this. And, some. And, 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 and to their benefit, it worked. Props to the people who showed up and had a good time. Props to the filmmaker and the crew there who didn't get paid yeah. at all until Questlove probably bought this for not as much as they probably wanted to make. Right, right. But uh, they did an incredible job shooting it. And like Jay said, it's, it's extremely great colorful. Great piece of history. It's, um, it's, 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 it really is. History that we didn't know about, history which is rare it, these it, days to find out. Yeah, and if you're into soul music, you absolutely have to watch this documentary. Um, and really, if you know any kind of music from the late sixties, you're, you're going to love this. And I hope to God that one day they're actually able to press this on vinyl and release these performances so we can actually listen to the entire thing. Um, so how many, how dream. many funky African outfits do we rate? This? I was going to do 45s, four, oh, soul many, 45s. Soul 45s. I would give it a straight up four, four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a solid, uh, four and a half funky African outfits. I thought sure. it was unbelievable. Um, well done, Quest Love. Thanks for bringing it to light so we could watch it. And yeah, uh, let's give him a call. Yeah, tell him Quest Love. Should have had him on the show. I actually seriously, when I was watching this, got on Instagram to try and direct message him to say, hey, "Are you going to press this?" It wouldn't be, su- dude. I bet you if you Turned do that, it, I bet you he will respond. Well, to you. his direct messaging hey, thing. Ricky turned Rocket off, so. responded immediately. I know he did, and Man, I'm jealous. But Quest Love will respond Quest to you. Quest Love turned it off, so I can't. I he can't turned it, it off. Yeah, he's so getting he bombarded. Yeah, he was getting uh, ah. Yeah. Well, um, un- unfortunately for me, we'll we'll figure it out one day. But my friend, next what week is the documentary we're watching. Next week, week uh, I found a very interesting curveball. I was just browsing through Amazon and I came across the Beaver Trilogy Part Four, and it I clicked it, and it's something different. I I'm, I'm not going to say what it is, and I don't look into what it is. Just watch it blind, like I did. Um, is this an abducted in plain sight situation no, here? No, not at all. Okay. This is a really, uh, okay. this is a really weird one, man. It's okay. a really well, weird one. As long as it's not an abducted it's a in plain weird one. sight. No, there's no, nobody doing anything weird to anybody okay. in this Good. one. But, all right. Well then. But the, there is some touches of some weirdness. The <laughs> Beaver Trilogy part four. Yeah. Yeah. Part four. I don't know what happened to the first three parts, but well, we'll find we'll, out. We'll skip ahead to part four. And, uh, as always, you on can Amazon. Down, yeah. Amazon prime. We'll watch it and, uh, watch it if you haven't already. And we will uh, be live on Facebook once again next week to talk about it. You can download Dark Side of the Stream wherever you get your podcasts at or, of course, on our 104.7 The Cave app. It is Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7. Springfield's pure classic rock. 104.7 The Cave.